Great. All right, folks. Um, welcome and thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I'm super excited to chat with you guys about Autism Spectrum Support Services here at GC um, and to be able to talk about all the work that I do. Um, I'm very passionate about um, autism and about uh, teaching children with autism. I wanted to start with a quick story because I think it's always a great place to start. Um, I started teaching back in 1999 um, and I started uh, working with high school students. Um, it was not what I got into education for. I actually wanted to teach early childhood ed and teach kids how to read. Um, so I started working with a bunch of kids who are slightly older and then got the fortunate opportunity to teach um, my first student with autism. Um, his name was Jacob. He was a young first grader who was just emerging with his language use. He was um, uh, pretty successful at coming to school and being present. What he struggled with was using his language and um, responding to basic teacher directions. Um, and I was sort of confused at the time being a new teacher. I thought that I had all the skills I needed to do my job. What I quickly realized was that my skill set was quite limited when it came to really helping this young man function in a school setting. Um, so kind of as we were navigating, um, getting to know each other, um, I noticed his aide, uh, Kathy, was amazing with him. Um, Kathy Galante, uh, she recently retired. She won't mind me mentioning her name. She was amazing with him. And I just saw a gift with her that I didn't quite have. I did not have her skill set. He was responsive. She used his schedule. She was supportive. And I just thought to myself, I have a lot to learn. Um, I learned a lot from Jacob, but I learned a lot from Kathy too, as far as how to support kids with ASD. One thing you don't know about me is I love um, knowledge. I like to know what to do. I like to know that I'm, I'm doing the right thing. And I didn't know that I was at the time. So I made it my mission uh, to figure it out. And um, I'm here 23 years later, still figuring it out. Um, you know, I think the most perplexing and fascinating thing about autism is that it's ever changing and it's individualized. So my work does not stop and I'm ex quite excited that it doesn't. Um, so I wanted to start by talking a little bit about, um, so thank you for indulging me in that story. Um, I think it's one that I like to share with groups and one that um, always keeps me um, back to my uh, training, which was as a classroom teacher. Can you all see the presentation just so that I don't? Great. Hey, Adam, just so you know, you might yes. have people still entering. Can I you did have that? one just enter, Mrs. Paxson, I believe just joined us. Um, Hi, Mrs. Paxson. That's okay. All right, folks. Um, so let's move on to the next slide. Um, I'm going to be uh, talking tonight about autism spectrum, but I'm also going to have a special guest speaker, Dr. Morris, whom you all have met earlier, and I'm super excited she was able to join us tonight. Um, I wanted to thank you for joining me and my colleagues as we present um, autism spectrum disorder and what that means here at Gates Trilog. Um, I have the fortunate opportunity to talk to you a little bit about, about my job, and um, I'm pretty excited to do so. This is my 22nd year um, as a public school education teacher. Um, and autism consultant. I started uh, teaching special ed um, back, as I mentioned before, in 99, working exclusively with um, students with autism three years later. Um, I worked in the classroom for about seven years, um, kind of honing my clinical and practical skills with students on the spectrum and learned a variety of teaching techniques um, on the fly with the students that allowed me to start um, being trained professionally and gaining more skills to be able to more successfully support our kids. Um, the reason I share this slide is I um, started my career as a teacher, as a special ed teacher. And that's rare in the field of autism and that most people in my consult field have a background in mental health. Um, what was different about being a teacher is that I had the clinical experience and the practical application of the strategies oftentimes talked about from the variety of other folks that typically fill the role. So it's just a slightly unique um, presentation. Uh, just to go a little bit into my background and kind of how I got to where I am, I won't go over all of this. I know this is a lot of words and a lot of information, but I am a TEACH certified uh, practitioner from the University of North Carolina. Um, <clears throat> it's, excuse me, a credential that I'm not only quite proud of, but something that I've worked on for the last 10 years of my professional career. Um, I've worked with local UNC trainers who are regional trainers who um, come to Rochester and train local professionals in teach philosophy. Um, and 
So I have been consulting in the TEACH method um, for the past eight years. Um, and some other areas of growth or um, certification, I am a, teach, or a TCI uh, certified practitioner as well. So I use therapeutic crisis intervention with our, our students and staff. Um, and that's the certification I've maintained for the last 18 years. I have a variety of other types of specialized training that um, kind of allow me to call myself an autism spectrum specialist. Um, that includes CERTS model training, PECs, ABA or discrete trial teaching. Um, and I've worked with a variety of local professionals and professionals around um, the United States to be able to learn and hone those skills. Um, that being said, I still have a lot more to learn and we go through this process together. But I just wanted to share a little bit about um, my history. There are some other things on this slide that um, people may refer to. Um, one of the most exciting things is that I recently started working with um, folks over at Walt Disney to host and um, uh, provide the first autism awareness uh, celebration here at KH Chile as a school-wide community. And I'm pretty excited to talk about that in a few minutes about what we're doing over there. Um, so I'm pretty excited. Um, the reality is though, I can't do this alone. Um, and I need the help of colleagues, families, and ultimately our students to be successful in what I do. I'm super excited to introduce a dear colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Danielle Morris. She and I have collaborated for, I don't know, Danielle, it seems like a long, long time. Um, and I wanted to invite her in because I believe she's an integral part to the autism support services that we provide here at GC. So I just wanted to give her an opportunity to talk a little bit about her background. Hand it over to you, Danielle. You're gonna give me my slide for sheet purposes. Adam makes me wonder what I've been doing with all my time. Uh, <laughs> um, when I when I look at that very impressive list of things, I'm not particularly good at talking about myself. I think people know that. I, I prefer to spend most of my brain power thinking about the kids. And they are the central um, part to the work that I do, in, in my opinion, that everything is about the children and about trying to figure out who they are as individuals. Um, I loved Adam's story about his first teaching job, made me think about the first student with autism that I worked with directly, um, probably just about 25 years ago at this point in time, uh, who was a young man who was mostly nonverbal. And I really think we have so much to learn from our kids, whether they can speak verbally or not. Definitely something to keep in mind. So I have been working in this field for over 25 years. Um, I say autism and related disorders. I think that that gets a little bit mushier as they keep playing with diagnostic criteria, but I think it's worth talking about autism and the spectrum that goes with it. Um, I have experience in all the major methodologies associated with autism spectrum disorders, ABA, DIR, CERTS, TEACH. Actually, the first time I ever met Adam, he was a participant in a five-day training I was doing on DIR with a couple of other folks in the area. And um, I think that was quite some time ago now. I don't know if Adam remembers when that was or not. I am a licensed clinical psychologist in the state of New York. Uh, I primarily work with school districts in area BOCES, providing consultation to teams working with children on the spectrum, children with ADHD, children with anxiety, and children with behavioral issues. Um, the answer to what I do with my time is actually somebody earlier this year asked me how many kids I was working with. And the first response I gave was I have no clue how to answer that question. But I did spend some time thinking about it one day. And when I started adding up the kids in the classrooms that I will talk about, all the kids in the 611s and all the kids in 1211s and other districts and other places where I'm working with large teams of kids. And I realized the number is over 100. So that's what I've been doing with my time. Hand it back to Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. Um... It's been so, I've been so fortunate to be able to, to, to benefit from Danielle's consult and support and tutelage, quite honestly. Um, and I'm super excited that she's Tutelage. Um, there. Um, in addition to Dr. Morris, um, we also have a variety of folks that we consult with on a regular basis. Um, that includes Jason DeJong, uh, Director of Pupil Morris Personal Services. Alex from Young Tory. Um, coordinator of uh, preschool to five special ed and Julie Stark, coordinator of six to 12 special ed and CSC coordinator. 
Um, Dr. Chastity Murray, who's presented to SEPTO in the past, um, I work with her on a regular basis to support students with comorbidity or dual diagnosis or um, need of behavior and autism consultation. Um, another misnomer about my job is that I work with mental health providers, classroom teachers, related service providers, and other administrators to collaborate on behalf of oh. students. Um, we also use Don't independent contractors talk. on an as-needed basis um, <sighs> to support our learners. Lastly, we, Dr. Morris, as she mentioned, is part of our consult team. Um, Dr. Morris and I um, consult together twice monthly um, where Danielle will come in and we will do observations. We will do direct consults of teams, attend team meetings. Um, and or anything else that the staff requests as far as supporting our students with, with autism. So a lot of people ask, why um, do we have Autism Spectrum Disorder Special Services here at GC? And I think after speaking with Mr. DeJong and Danielle and a few other administrators, um, you know, they identified a few years ago a need for some in-house staff development as it pertains to ASD kind of really expanding our understanding of treatment approaches and the variety of types of students we service here at HGLI. Um, and it also enhances the quality of support that we can provide students when you have an in-house person devoted to that. Um, I've spent a lot more time in the classroom, um, classrooms and with students directly um, than I think um, have been previously provided. I honestly believe that it's a rare option to have a district person or staff role associated with the district. And I'm pretty fortunate to be here at GC. Um, I have had the privilege to meet and work with a, um, a, a wonderful dedicated staff here at GC. That's the biggest surprise to me um, that they are so dedicated and so motivated to understand our children with autism. I look forward to meeting and working with all, more staff members. I didn't hear much, but your back's highlighted when you talk. That's how I knew it was you. No biggie, ha ha. Linda, I can hear you. Can you mute yourself? Sorry, Adam. That's okay, Linda. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that being said, I think it is a rare thing that GC offers and something to be celebrated. Um, so talk a little bit about the consult model. Um, when we're here at school, we provide consult services to over 35 identified students with IEPs or 504s. Um, we work specifically with staff development and training in various topics associated with a ASD, learning styles in ASD, introduction are just a few examples, and or other specific instructional strategies that support our learners. Um, I currently just recently from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, attended a collegial circle that I'm hosting regarding social story training for uh, professionals. And I have 13 um, teachers, speech therapists, mental health providers, all attending the training and working together to collaboratively produce social stories to help treat our students. Um, and what I found just for the record and to share with you guys real time is that um, people are starting to write their own stories without the um, direction or homework to do so. So it's having some merit and application to both um, professional and personal lives. And I think that's just one nice representation of how the staff training that Danielle and I have um, provided folks um, continues to evolve and change and support um, our teaching staff. Um, we also, provide social group models. So oftentimes um, we will be asked to uh, provide a model, like can you run a social group and teach us how we might address that particular concept or idea. So I'm currently working with two separate staff um, groupings in two separate classrooms to coach and provide um, groups and uh, social skills development. And so that's been a great um, asset and another avenue for the teachers to kind of ask more probing questions about why I selected a particular strategy or support or even, or even context or skill. And lastly, I'm a proud member of the GC SEPTO. Um, I believe wholeheartedly in connecting our families with our school providers and finding that connection um, and providing that connection as much as we possibly can. So in the vein of Autism Acceptance and or Autism Awareness Fund, I wanted to provide you a, site, um, a real quick insight into information I provide uh, people here at GC. And we believe here at GC um, that children can exhibit challenging behavior when the demands placed on them 
outstrip the skills they have to respond adaptively to those demands. And the same can be said of all human beings, but I use this as a slide to talk about that our kids can do well when they know how. Um, I believe that kids can do well when we teach them how. So I do believe wholeheartedly that we can show, we can model, we can teach a variety of skills to children with ASD, and it is our job to do so. Um, I also lastly believe, and I think I can say we because I think I've spoken to everyone around this frame, when we operate kind of in this belief that our students can do well when we teach them how, what we actually do is build a strength-based approach in which we celebrate the gifts and strengths that our students present to us. And that's a fundamental shift in a lot of um, thinking educationally, and I think something that I'm pretty proud to be a part of here at GC. The next question I ask everyone is what tools and strategies will you choose to teach our students? So I challenge folks to really start thinking about what are they choosing to focus on and address in their classrooms and with their students. I also wanted to share a little bit about autism. So I do think it's, a, um, you know, I, I know it's a developmental disorder, um, but what we see most commonly in our students is difficulties with social interaction and communication and or the presence of restricted or repetitive behaviors. So restricted interests, narrow interests, or repetitive behaviors. Both have to be observed for us to see autism. And more importantly, that the diagnosis of autism kind of in, gives uh, neurotypical folks a perspective that people with autism um, process the world slightly differently, physically, emotionally, and socially, they process it slightly differently than, than the neurotypical world. So when we approach students with autism, we have to keep that in the back of our mind that we are coming from the angle or lens of someone with an autism spectrum. So we have to understand their perspective in order to treat and move them forward. And the last quote here is just a quote that I find super humorous, humorous from a, uh, an author that I love tremendously. Uh, he wrote the book, Neurotribes. But I just think it's an interesting perspective when we push neurodiversity and acceptance of all learners and what that truly means to each one of us. And this is a quote that I share with all of our staff, once again, to really reflect on, are we focusing on, on the, the things we should be focusing on? Um, we teach empathy and compassion and understanding of all kids here, but more importantly, when they're struggling, when they're emotionally dysregulated or in crisis, um, we often say we need to invite our students into our calm and not joining them in, in their struggle. So how do we show them what to do or how do we teach them what to ask for or what they need to regulate their bodies and their minds? So a lot of my time the last few years have been, have been focused on that. And lastly, just a few um, factual information from the CDC about autism. And the important piece here is I just wanted to highlight um, that about a third of, of children with autism um, present with an intellectual disability. Um, and the reason I share the side with folks, because more importantly, that means that two thirds of our students with autism have borderline normal or above average intelligence, which quite honestly really changes the game for us. Um, when I first started this work, it was not such a high number. The research didn't support our theories that these kids have not only potential capacity to grow and, and to have normal intelligence, but honestly, oftentimes can outweigh or outsmart um, the rest of us. So just something I think to focus on once again when we're talking about strength-based approach. Our kids can learn, they will learn, and we'll show them how. These are the types of students that are currently receiving ASD services at Gates Chilai. Um, we have two students in our elementary teach-based classrooms located at Walt Disney. Um, we have two programs at the middle school and high school for our CAS program, Communication and Social Skills. We have grade level self-contained classrooms at Paul Road. Um, all but kindergarten first is a mixed class this year, but each grade level has um, students with identified um, diagnosis and autism support services. We also support students in our integrated co-taught classrooms, our eight moment program at the high school and in general education models on an as needed basis and or if the student has um, an IEP with the service being delivered. We consult all teams and students with a formal diagnosis and or at the discretion of Mr. DeJong. Um, so that's just the types of students we service. And then quickly, um, kind of how I spend my time. This is just a quick visual of what I've been able to um, track for the last year and a half. Um, and what I wanted to highlight here is if you can see the blue part, most of my time is spent with teachers and students. 
Um, and I think that's super important. When I'm starting to get to know the community, the players, the students, um, and the rest of my time is spent um, with some staff training, staff development, um, looking at um, creation of materials or defining or designing lesson plans to share with folks. Um, and lastly, office time um, to uh, support my schedule, but also follow up with emails and phone calls to all the folks that we provide services for. So um, that was a very quick, very fast, lots of information specifically about our autism support services here at Gates Chi Lai. Um, I wanted that to- That doesn't waste any time. What was <laughs> You don't happening? waste any time. You get right to the heart of the matter. Just go for it. That's what allows you to spend so much time in the classrooms. That's right. That's right. Um, but, you know, I think, thank you, Danielle. I think um, the one last thing I did want to just highlight for folks is this initiative at um, Walt Disney School that I just have to thank some folks around the table. Um, we have a lot of players. We have Kelly Conlin, uh, Elaine D'Amelio, um, Amy General, uh, Cindy Wilson, um, a lot of folks uh, kind of came to, Sarah Mussino came to the table to really define, um, we need to celebrate autism um, with our students at Walt Disney. Um, not our students with our, 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 in our self-contained room, but really the, the students that are in general ed models. Um, the reason we started at Walt Disney is that um, it is our more severe and profound um, classrooms and presentations. Um, so the kids typically see things that maybe they wouldn't see in other programs. So we thought it was super important to start demystifying and kind of teaching kids about autism. Um, so last year, Amy General um, and myself started reading to all of the kids uh, a book about how to be a great friend to someone with autism. We continued that work this year. Um, myself, Cindy Wilson and Amy General have read to all grades, uh, second through fifth grade and, and conducted a mini lesson about what is autism, but more importantly, what can they do to support our learners with autism and how to be a good friend to them. And I think we're really excited to be presenting that this year in our first annual um, Autism Awareness Month initiative and to see how the kids respond. We um, also created an autism mural uh, where the students will be placing um, their perspectives on how they might be a good friend to someone with autism. And I think that's important to validate our students' work and also to acknowledge that they understand that our kids um, need as much attention, kindness, and compassion as they receive. So I just wanted to thank some of the folks around the table to make that um, possible. We're also doing a t-shirt sale um, that has uh, created a lot of buzz and we've made a lot of um, kind of sales there, which is super exciting uh, to support wearing t-shirts on Fridays uh, in, in honor of Autism Awareness Month. Um, we also provided our teaching staff uh, some basic activities, a few videos and um, a bookmark, uh, just teaching kids more about what autism is. Um, so we're pretty excited to explore that this year. And we're hoping to expand this initiative to include more buildings next year. Um, but we're super excited to be starting at Walt Disney. Danielle, what did I forget? I think you you managed to cover all the bases there, Adam. <laughs> sure. I know it's a lot of information. As Danielle and I were deciding what to share with you guys tonight, we thought it was important to share um, and highlight the types of supports provided within the district, but also to um, brag a little bit about um, GC having an ASDS specialist and or multiple ASDS specialists. So having Dr. Morris and myself um, consult with a variety of teams has been super helpful. Um, and we are getting some really great feedback. So I kind of wanted to throw it out to the group to ask if there were any questions specific to Autism Spectrum Disorder Specialist Services or autism. Adam, can I ask and share? Sure can. First of all, I it, this is such perspective, it's interesting because originally I um, worked in Brighton for forever. And it's curious to me that all of these services are provided and housed within the district. Because while it's not uncommon for all districts to have some aspect of support through the autism um, consulting, they're usually hired as contracted minutes. So they maybe come in a designated time during the month for an hour, a half a day, whatever, and they consult then. But 
never in the heat of the moment per se, like that has its flaws and that's an a la carte type of um, service delivery. This seems so much more fluid, connected and cohesive. Is that what you're finding that by being in the district with all of these um, professionals being able to distribute service, but also come together for service, does that seem to be way more effective? It, it appears to me like it would be. And I'm gonna take this question off of Adam's plate for a second. As, as somebody who does do some direct a la carte work with districts and also has the you know privilege to do the additional consultation to a district that has an autism consultant directly in it, yeah. it is a, a, a major difference in comprehensive service from my perspective, because to your point, Heather, that um, somebody who's doing a la carte can't be there in the heat of a moment. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're sometimes 50 miles away right. <laughs> when, when somebody would really like you to see what they wanted you to see versus maybe being five to 10 minutes away in another building where there's a lot more ability to be, you know, quickly to someplace if there's, there's the need for that. So it really changes the dynamic, um, the ability to be part of a team as opposed to being an add-on to something, it's much more difficult as an autism person coming in to be that add-on person than it is to be an integral part of the team. And even in my role as an additional consultation, I also feel more like a part of the team because of the comprehensive nature of Adam's position in Gates. Yeah, yeah, that does seem so true. And then the other part was a question, and I'm not sure if this is best for Mr. DeJong or for you, Adam, can you give me some more information about the CASP program? Is that a service or a program? It is a program. Um, it's called Communication and Social Skills Program. It was designed for um, students with autism and or high functioning autism and or Asperger syndrome or what was former known as Asperger syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, these students are typically at and or close to grade level equivalents and on the track towards um, receiving a regions based diploma, um, but need explicit instruction in social skill development and social skill interactions. Okay. So, um, so the program itself is designed to target specific social skills and develop those social skills with the hopes that they can then take those skills and apply them in their general ed community um, to the best of their ability. Okay, and that's, that's taught by speech and language pathology, that's, that's taught by special ed, by you. How is that service delivered or that program delivered? So I'll, I'll add on to that just a little bit. I would also add on that, they, you know, they do focus on executive functioning skills as well um, within the program as a, as a large component of it. But it is at the middle school, it is, it is a, it, they're in the CAS program specifically for two periods a day. Um, one is for a social studies co-taught class. And then the other one is for a, a regular CAS type program where they do focus on social skills, social communication and executive functioning. And then similarly in the high school, same sort of format, except they're in the classroom for English instead of social studies. Okay. And so you need an IEP to participate in that program, a 504, or that's just recommended so, as a general education support? So at the middle school, it's really a time for us to provide those supports to any student that they feel we feel wow. would be possibly would need them. And that's why we've created as a co-taught class so that there's a gen ed teacher in there and a special education teacher in there. So we can have a mixture of students with 504s, IEPs, or gen ed students. Phenomenal. Wow. By the time we get to high school, it is taught by a special education teacher. So we really want to, you know, by the time they get to high school, we want to know who are our students with IEPs, maybe 504s, but IEPs that really need this service. But in middle school, we have an opportunity to kind of figure that all out. Yeah. In middle school, don't we all have yeah. social, social language issues? Thank you. Very nice. I think one uh, other... Um, oh, 
Sorry. Okay. One other hugely impactful uh, uh, component of our CAST program is that um, it allows students with like-minded viewpoints to come together and understand each other and feel more supported um, in, in the larger school community. So they find strength within each other. And I think that's the value, um, added value to having a CAST program at the middle and high school is that they have like-minded individuals that they can feel more connected with. And I think I've found some secondary impact from just grouping those kids in a, in a, in a group together. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, this is, yeah. Laura, How yes. would we uh, join the CAS program? Is that something that we discuss at our CSE meetings or is that something that the teachers recommend? It's a great question, Jason. Yeah, so it would definitely is a, a conversation at CSE meetings as, as students are transitioning to the middle school. Um, and it all depends on, you know, the amount of support that that students need. Since they're really only in that CAS class for two periods out of the day, um, they have to be prepared to go out for the rest of the day and be in a consultant teacher model or sometimes in general education um, classes without any support. So it's a lot really on the level of support that a student would potentially need. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Lauren, Lauren Henderberg. Thank you, just trying to unmute. Um, you mentioned about t-shirts. Um, are those still for sale to be able to support on Fridays or is that something that we can possibly make for sale to support on Fridays in May as well, <laughs> you know? That's, that's a great question. Kelly, are we still selling t-shirts or is that closed? I day? can always put in another order. Um, I would love that. Um, I can email you back um, and get that order form from you possibly. Yeah, also, or Amy and Carrie kind of, they have an order form that maybe they could send out and maybe um, there'd be some other go into the faculty meeting schoology folder they're in that in that folder for for um walt disney i'm not at disney this year though i'm at um oh yeah so i'm remote this year but i'm based okay. at armstrong okay we can definitely get you a copy and i also saw patty schmidt um asked if it was available at other buildings as well so we'll get her a copy of the form as well um Perfect. and for any Thank other you. folks I'd like one too, Adam. All right, Judy. <laughs> okay, folks, um, anything else about um, the services provided and or um, autism as a whole? I know that it's a lot of information and um, it was done pretty quickly, but I did wanna kind of uh, be cognizant of time and also provide you the information that I thought you may um, have um, a need for. So that was the tougher part. A lot of folks have some basic and um, some more advanced training in autism. So I really made it about the support services being provided and the work that um, my colleagues and I do surrounding supporting our students. Before we sign off, um, I would re be remiss, even if it embarrasses Adam a little, not to take the opportunity to talk about the phenomenal job that was done for the students in the 611 classes when the shutdown happened last year. That I can tell you from being in multiple school districts that nobody supported their kids as well as Gates did in that type of classroom. And I know that that was largely due to Adam. Danielle, um, thank you for embarrassing me. Um, I think it was a group effort and you were included in that effort. Um, it was a wonderful opportunity to provide a unique lens for our learners and also our educators. Um, we got to learn our skill sets of each other better. We were able to understand what our students needed and we found a few students that benefited from having that distance um, physically between uh, the teachers and the student. Um, so it actually, <laughs> we found a lot of secondary gains, or I think Danielle called them silver linings or, or um, rust linings or something um, like that. COVID bronze linings, bronze because lining, to call yeah. them silver would be to overvalue COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. But thank you, Danielle, for mentioning it. It was a great time for us to learn and grow professionally and together as, as a team. So thank you for mentioning it.
Adam, I'm so grateful to have met you and to know you through Septo now. And I love your passion and your knowledge. And I continue to learn. I look forward to learning more from you. And I'm just grateful to know that you're here within the district. And thanks for being a part of our team. I just had a couple general questions like about autism. What, what is the, the, the prevalence typically? And also how many students well, in all staff, we all benefit um, from these services directly or indirectly. Um, but how many students directly benefit um, from these services in Gates Yep. Um, so the prevalence um, in general is one in 54 at this point. Um, so it's a pretty high number. Just to give you a, a scope of the, the fast growth that we're seeing in autism, when I first started, it was one in 120. Um, so it is exponentially grown in the last 20 years. Um, so it's a pretty high rate of incidents. One in 10,000 25 years ago was what it was estimated at. Wow. One it in 10,000? One in 10,000. It was considered to be a rare developmental disorder 25 years ago. And here we are now at one in 54. Significant difference. Really. Um, as well as um, how many students are serviced. I service directly 35 to 37 students, I believe, um, depending on the day. Um, but it's approximately 35 students who benefit from direct consultation services. Um, beyond that, though, there are an additional five, maybe five to seven students that are not identified that I'm currently consulting with um, for the purpose of determining need for service. Did that answer your question, Tina? I think you got both. Definitely. And then some. Thank you. I appreciate no the history and the. I'm interested to see as we continue to learn more um, where that takes us. I agree. I think there's a lot of great work right now in neurodivergence and neuroacceptance and understanding that there are a variety of types of learning um, needs and presentations. And I think we as educators are continuing to expand that understanding of what that actually looks like in school. Um, so every day, every moment, we learn from each other and, and gain new skills to be better able to support our learners. I'll also add that there's a parent SEPTO member who's, who's not here right now, but I'm sure she'll watch this later. So hi. Um, but she has mentioned at a few meetings now how it would be so great for um, all people and, and not just those who have autism or special needs to, to learn about them. So thank you so much for adding that within your presentation and for doing that work. And thanks for the folks at Walt Disney for being open to it. Um, I think that that's just a great example and, and a wonderful thing to celebrate. So, um, you know, let us know what else we can do to help promote those efforts via SEPTA emails or Facebook and, and things like that, because um, that's definitely something to celebrate. Awesome, thank you, Tina. Well, I just wanted to thank you, Adam and Dr. Morris. This was really wonderful, um, I appreciate it. And I am going to put Heather and Renee on the spot. I know we don't have a date for next month, but if you wanna just maybe quickly let people know what you have started to consider for next month for our, our May SEPTO event. Sure, Renee's the actually the district speech pathologist. So she's got a little more <laughs> prestige than myself, but we'll be joining together and talking next month about um, speech language pathology. I will take the side of the presentation where we describe just simply what we, um, look at what we do, what we consider, and what we've learned. And then Renee will expand upon, uh, similar to what Adam has done, what services are provided within the district and how she um, provides within programming and service delivery. Uh, so it'll kind of be a two-part um, two presentation. Renee? Yes, I couldn't have said any better. We've got those two big sections, what is speech pathology and then how gates Chi-Li delivers it and what it looks like in gates Chi -Li. And you will find similarities. Um, Adam, something you said is ringing true, how we look at those behaviors and we're learning um, more about those in the neurotypical um, profiles and then those that are maybe not. And the same is true within our field 
we've gotten so good at monitoring behaviors, following behaviors, uh, trying to manage behaviors, but there's so much room for growth when it comes to following the brain. And if you follow the brain, then it will open up so much more, many more opportunities for you in terms of understanding different learning profiles. So Renee and I can touch upon that in the world of speech pathology. And that will be probably the beginning of May. Is that what you're thinking, Renee? Yeah. Beginning I, of May, I think. Whenever, I'm good anytime in May. <laughs> Calendar's open. <laughs> okay. Heather, May is better hearing and speech month. Yes. That's kind of how we uh, yep. jumped onto that, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So I know we talked about the t-shirts. I'm going to put my email address in the chat bar. You can feel free to email me. I'm also going to put the SEPTO page. If you are not already on our mailing list, you can join and we update when our events are. We also update our Facebook page as well. That's a great plug. And a YouTube channel with recordings of this and the previous events that we've done too. Any further questions? Hi, this is Sharice. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Um, I started the call, you know, when I introduced myself and let everyone know <laughs> about um, Mason's, you know, repetitive questions every day about the move. I just wanted to add in there that I was adamant to stay in the Gage Chilai School District because I'm so pleased with how he's doing at Paul Road um, and the interaction that I have with the school district and all of his teachers, his therapists, everyone. Um, you know, maybe TMI, but it was a little bit where I moved to was a little bit kind of out of my price range, but it had the room that I needed um, for both of my kids. And, you know, like I said, above anything else, I wanted to make sure uh, that my son stayed in the Gates Child High School District um, because we do have um, that in-house um, specialist um, in Adam that um, Heather and forgive me, I think it was Danielle that were they were talking about earlier. The fact that he's there is the reason is one of the reasons um, that I made the point to stay within the Gates Child High School District. So thank you, Adam and um, the Gates Child High School District for having an in-house autism specialist. I really appreciate it. I'm very fortunate, Teresa, and thank you for sharing your little guy with us. We love seeing him every day and, and watching him grow. Thank you. He came home very excited. He was very happy to be back at school today. That he was. He looked he looked like he was having a blast earlier today. So I yeah. expect that. <laughs> Thank you, Cherise. Thank you. I guess we can end it if no one else has anything. Thank you guys so much for taking the time for listening um, and for being present. It means a lot to me and the GC community has been so welcoming. Um, and as I get to know more and more about this district, I'm just excited to be here. So thank you everyone. Good night folks. Good night everybody. Bye Danielle, thank you. You're welcome. Good night. Good night, Judy. Bye, Carrie. Bye, Tina. Bye, Jenny.